In the last video, we saw how this trim tool can be pretty helpful to make adjustments to your clips and the timing of your clips. In this video, I wanna show another tool that's built into Final Cut Pro that many editors, I would say, don't use or are not comfortable using. And it's a unique tool, it's very visual, but there's a lot going on. And it's called the Precision Editor. And this is a tool that actually originated in iMovie and then got added to Final Cut Pro 10. And it's, it's actually quite useful and visual way of editing on your timeline. So I've switched back to just the normal select tool. And to get into the precision editor, I'm just going to double click on an edit point. And you'll notice when I double click on it, we see everything expands out. It, it actually becomes kind of confusing as far as what you're looking at if you're not familiar. So I'm going to double click again on the edit point to close the precision editor. Okay, so you can see that. And then we'll double click again on the edit point to expand it, just so you can see that. And again, the edit points are marked in this middle kind of row that goes through here. So just double click on any of those to close the precision editor. So what is this editor actually showing you? Well, here's what's happening. All of the clips that are visible in your project are highlighted in kind of a lighter color. And then you'll see some of them are dimmed out, like this area of this clip. So what this is showing you, depending on which edit is selected, which we can see this kind of bar going through, you can click on each of these edit points in the middle to switch between an edit. But what's being shown here is the available media for your edit. So you're playing through each of these clips, and right now we have this edit point selected, which means we're working with this clip. I'm gonna do Command Z because I clicked there. We're working with this clip at the top, the transition, which in this case is just a cut, and the second clip that goes out. So the way that this works is you can actually drag these clips. I'm going to click and drag this clip to the left. And what you'll notice, just looking at this block right here, it is making that clip longer. So there's all this dead space at the end. And if I play it back, I'm just going to hit the space bar. And you, can't you, can't keep keep forever. Forever. No. you can't keep them forever. There's kind of this pause with the arm grab, and then it cuts down to the second clip. So if I wanted to, I can do the same thing with the bottom clip. I'll click and drag this to the right to extend that clip. And same thing if I play this, you're going to see it's much worse at it now. You from people. Yeah. And you can't keep them forever. It distances no, no. you from people. You can't keep them forever. That line's being repeated on the second clip. So I'm actually going to drag this back to the left. And looking at the audio waveform at the bottom, this is very helpful to be able to see where things happen. I'm going to drag this over. Let's play this back yeah. again. And you can't keep them forever. Nah. No. I know your big secret, Ralph. So right there, in this first clip, right at this point, you can see he moves his arm over to tap Ralph's arm. And right at that moment is really where I want this cut to happen. So I'm actually going to roll the edit by clicking and dragging this to the left. And notice what that's doing. It's shortening the top clip and lengthening the bottom clip. And we'll go right about here. And I'm able to see each of the frames that we're cutting on visible in the two viewers there. And I'll let go, and then we'll hit the space bar to play it. And you can't keep them forever. Nah. So that's a pretty good cut on edit that's happening there. And again, using the precision editor, I was able to adjust the top clip's position pretty easily without having to go to the trim tool or use anything else. I can visually see all the available media. And I was able to do the same thing with the bottom. And in the middle here, I was able to roll that edit over. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that edit. So I can just click on the next edit point and we can play this one to see what's happening here. I'm going to use the shortcut shift question mark to play around this edit point. So there I can see a, a very glaring issue here. The first clip, notice our main character, Ralph, who's again on the right side. Ralph looks up in this clip back at Simon. See that look? that he goes through. And then if we go down to that second clip, he's still looking down at his shoulder. And he's looking back up again. So that's not good. I want him to be moving his, his, his angle of view where he's moving his head. I want that to happen on the edit point. So looking at this first clip, 
right about here is where he starts moving up. So I'm gonna click and drag this over to the right. Right when he starts looking right there, he kind of looks up and that's where I want the cut to happen. So then down on this bottom clip, I'm gonna click and drag this to the left. And I'm looking at the viewer on the right side to see where that first frame is, which is really right at the end of his tilt, right there. And then we'll go back and play this. I know you're a big secret, Ralph. Really? And that didn't feel too good to me. Let's see it again. I almost want to see more of that look. Let's try moving this back to the right a little bit. I'll play it again. I know you're a big secret, Ralph. Really? Maybe I'll extend this one, see how it looks. And you can see how I'm just moving a couple frames at a time, because that's what the precision editor is for. You're being very precise and very specific about the adjustments you make here in that precision editor. So in this case, I'm happy with that, I'm fine with it. I'm just gonna click on the, double click on this edit point to close the precision editor. And we're back to our timeline where we can continue to edit. And again, at any time, just double click on an edit point. You'll expand out into the precision editor. You can make your adjustments and then you'll double click to close it. The one last tip I wanna throw out here, if you do have transitions, which I'm gonna add a transition here to these two clips using Command T, when you're in the precision editor, this middle row here also allows you to change the duration of that transition. And you'll see it puts this diagonal line happening through the top and bottom clips to let you know where that transition point is happening. We can then roll the transition just like we could an edit point and adjust that. So that's another way for you to use that precision editor with transitions. I'm gonna do Command Z a couple times here to undo those last couple steps to remove that transition because I don't need it for this scene here.